Today we're going to be doing a quick unboxing of the Gigabyte H67A UD3H. It has a three-year warranty, as you may or may not have noticed. It supports Intel Core Series processors on LGA 1155, and it uses the H67 chipset. So that means it supports Turbo Boost, but it does not support overclocking on unlocked CPUs, and it does not support turning up Turbo CPUs past their default Turbo mode. So I'm sorry if that's confusing, but that's really the best I can do with it. It is compatible with Core i5s, but it is also compatible with Core i7s, which the only difference is they have more cache and they feature hyper-threading. And uh, when we have Intel Core i3s on their second generation Core series processors, it'll likely support those too. Up here, there's a little note, LGA 1155 CPU only. That is 100% correct. If you try and put an LGA 1156 CPU in this board, bad things will happen. None of them good. Okay, we have Ultra Durable 3, which means we have the 2X Copper PCB for you know better heat dissipation, more conductivity, all that good stuff. We also have Gigabyte's 333 concept, although the sticker appears to be missing from the box. So USB 3.0, which is fast. USB Power 3X, which is a cool feature because it allows you to use a hub on any one of the USB ports on this board and plug in three times as much power draw as uh, you would be able to normally do with a hub. So that's kind of neat. Okay, we have SATA 3.0, which is good. And over here we have on-off charge, which means that even when your system is powered off, you can charge devices such as, say for example, your iPhone. And what other relevant stuff do we have? Ooh, dual BIOS. So it's very, very difficult to wreck your board by corrupting the BIOS. It also apparently supports ATI Crossfire X technology, although I can imagine it's not an ideal configuration with an H67 chipset board. Here is a big, big warning. Yeah, we had a little tiny one on the front of the box, but this is more appropriate. 1155 CPUs, not 1156 CPUs. X, no. Okay, we have a user's manual that also includes a utility and driver DVD. Download the latest off the Gigabyte website. Um, cameraman is blocking most of our light at that angle, so maybe we'll shift a little bit this way. There we go. We have a color-coded I.O. shield. We have a multilingual installation guidebook, which is going to show you basic things like installing a CPU, installing RAM. We have two right angle and two straight SATA cables. We have a Dolby Home Theater sticker. My understanding is this is quite an expensive sticker. And then we also have a gigabyte powered sticker. That one is less expensive. Okay, here we go. This is an interesting strategy. I don't think I've ever seen this before. And I have unboxed, let me tell you guys, a lot of motherboards over the last couple of years here. So, hold on. There we are. I have never seen a piece of foam stuck in between the MOSFET heatsink. Oh, I see why. Well, that's not on there very well at all, is it? Oh, okay, so this is in here to prevent it from wiggling around during shipping. I mean, here, have a look. Okay, so let's start Let's start with that, since that seems like a bit of a concern, but it's probably fine. So we're using plastic push pins here, and then what appears to be like a softer style of thermal interface material under this. So you can see there's actually a very small contact point where this, this large heatsink is making contact with the VRMs. So in order to make sure that it stays straight during shipping, we got the foam, but while the system's running, that's going to melt a little bit and it's going to be on there pretty good. I don't think you're going to have to worry about burning out your VRMs. So the same goes for the one up here. It looks like this uses one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Looks like it uses eight plus two phase power for the LGA 1155 CPU. And unlike most H series chipset boards, this is a full ATX board. So we have support for our CPU here. We have our eight pin power connector in its ideal location at the top left of the board. We have full support for dual channel DDR3. We have our 24 pin power connector along the right hand edge of the board. Here is our Intel, well, Southbridge to use an archaic term, but our Intel, I believe it's called an IO hub now, which controls things like SATA ports, USB ports, all of that good stuff. And then we also have our front panel connectors. Wow, that's a lot of USB ports. That's five front panel USB headers. Outstanding. So you can hook up 10 front USB ports on your case if it actually has that many. Here we have seven expansion slots, three PCI, which is appropriate for an H series chipset board because you can't expect a value chipset board buyer to be necessarily running the very latest technology. A couple of Firewire 
headers. We've got two PCIe 1X slots and then two PCIe 16X slots. Now officially this board supports SLI, although I really wouldn't recommend running SLI because you can see right here, even though this is a 16X physical slot, which has enough spaces in here for PCIe 8X. Hopefully you can see, can you see the actual metal contact pins in there? Okay, well the metal contact pins only go up to here. So that's only a 4X electrical slot. Now while I usually tell viewers 8X and 8X is fine for Crossfire or SLI, 16X and 4X is probably not quite ideal, especially because these four lanes are running off the IO hub over here, rather than running off of the PCIe controller that's directly off the chipset because H67 is not capable of splitting into 8x, 8x. So it's a full 16x here and only 4x here. Here's your front panel audio connector. This uh, this location for it from Gigabyte will always baffle me. Everyone else and their dog puts it down here, but uh, usually I don't use the front panel header anyhow. Here on the back of the board, we will find some connectors which are conveniently covered, so I can't see what they are. Oh wow, we have every display connector under the sun, I think, but let's start over here. We've got a PS2... Uh, keyboard mouse combo port. We've got one, two, three, four USB 2.0 ports. That explains why there were so many on the board itself. We have VGA, DVI, DisplayPort, and HDMI. Yes, the whole shebang. And then we also have optical audio out. We've got Firewire as well as eSATA on the back of the board. We have two USB 3.0 ports, Gigabit Ethernet, and 7.1 audio out. Thank you for checking out my unboxing of the H67A UD3H, and don't forget to subscribe to Linus Tech Tips for more unboxings, reviews, and other computer videos.